In the last few videos, we've taken a closer look at Horner's method and seen why it works, and we've seen why it works in two different ways. One of them being a form of substitution, for example, when we want to know what f of p is, when f is a polynomial function, and p is just some real number. And we've also seen that it works as a form of division. So if we want to divide x minus p into f and get some quotient with some remainder. So Horner's method is a sort of a bridge connecting two islands, or at least two areas that you might think of as islands, but now they've been connected by a bridge. So they are definitely connected. And these two islands are function value island and polynomial division island. And that is to say, if we know the function value of some polynomial function, then we also know something about what the division would look like for x minus whatever the value is we used here. So if we say we're computing, computing f of p, then we know something about x minus p into f. And conversely, if we know something about x minus p into f, then we know the function value. So these two otherwise perhaps different seeming areas are somehow the same. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's say we have a friend and he boasts to us that he can look at this graph here, this graph of the polynomial function f. He can look at that and tell us what the remainder would be if we divided the polynomial f by, for example, 2. So let's say we were planning to do this. And he said, oops, I know. I know what the remainder is going to be. Now let's ask ourselves, how does he know that? Because this is a graph of the function. It's not a graph of x minus 2 divided by f, or f divided by x minus 2, right? So let's see if we can figure out how he knows that. So let's just do this division first. We'll write out the coefficients here. So I need to remember to write the coefficient 0 since there's no x to the fourth. Negative 7, 1, 10, and 1. And what I want to do is divide by x minus 2, so I need to write the 2, because I write down what I'm subtracting. So let's do this. We'll carry, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And so we see that we get an answer of 1. And we think our friend would have known that, but, how, but we don't know how he would know that. But let's think a second about what Horner's method does. On the one hand, it shows us what's the an what the answer is for this division. It shows us the quotient. This would be the quotient. And then also the remainder. This is the remainder. But it also is a way of computing the function value of this number here. So we also know that f of 2 is equal to 1. So now let's look on the graph and see how our friend could have known that. If we look at the point 2, 1, right here, we see that that is indeed, that's the point. When the x value is 2, the y value is 1. And we can see that, because this is the one right here. So that must be how our friend knows. So let's say we tell him, yeah, we know how to do it now. Now you can quiz us. And he says, okay, what would the remainder be if we divided uh, f by x plus 2? Well, we would just think in our heads 
that x plus 2 dividing by x plus 2 is the same as dividing by x minus negative 2. So we would just have to be writing negative 2 at this point, which means we would be looking for the function value at negative 2. Well, let's just look at the function value at, at negative 2. It looks like it's around here somewhere, and that looks like around the point 9. So we say to our friend, I think it's 9. And at this point, we realize our friend hadn't really known all along. He was just boasting. And so what he does is he does the Horner method here. He writes down the coefficient. 1, 0, 7, negative 7, and 1, and 10 and 1. And he wants to check our work and see if we got it right. So he writes the negative 2 here. So we carry, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, 9. Yes. Indeed, we were right. And now he looks at us and says, How did you do that? So, let's think about how we did that. Is that a principle? Or is that just a coincidence? Does it just have to do with this function? Obviously the answer is no, right? We've seen also in the other videos that we'll always get the same answer whether we think we're computing f of negative 2 here or we're actually dividing by x minus 2, right? We'll always get the same thing. So, let's give that a name. This is called the polynomial remainder theorem. And it states, basically, that f of p is equal to r, where p is a just a real number, f is a polynomial function, and r is the remainder of x minus p into f. Okay, that's the statement of the theorem. Now we want to prove it. So we can start by writing f of p and it's equal to and somehow or another we want to have an r here. But the question is, what do we do here? So here's the idea that we need. We need to rewrite f as being a sum of x minus 2 and some quotient and a remainder. So in other words, we want to rewrite f by first dividing f by, let's do that over here, we're going to divide f by x minus p, and we're going to get some answer, right, we'll get some quotient, we'll call that q, some q, and then some remainder, and we'll call that r. And if we rearrange this operation here, then we can write that like this, f is going to be equal to x minus p times q plus some constant r, right? So if we're dividing by x minus p, then some constant might be left over, right? It might be zero, it might be some other constant. In any case, r is just some real number. So if we rewrite f in this way, then we could rewrite the polynomial function this way. f of x would be equal to x minus p times q of x plus r. So if we want now to compute the value f of p, we can just sub in a p for this x, which would give us p minus p times q of p and plus r. Now we don't know what q of p would be, but we don't need to because p minus p is zero. 
and since that's zero, we know that this whole term here is zero. So that just falls away, and we're left with r. So that is exactly the idea that we needed. So if we again imagine that f of p here is an island, and r is an island, then we've just found a bridge that connects them. And this bridge is the polynomial remainder theorem. And we used polynomial long division to connect them. So this bridge is just the polynomial remainder theorem with the help with help of polynomial long division. That's how we can prove it. So if we now look at a special case called the factor theorem, we'll see that this is something that we'll be able to use often. So a special case where r is equal to 0 could be stated like this. f of p is equal to 0 if and only if the remainder of x minus p into f is 0. But we could rewrite both of these. f of p equals 0 just means p is a 0 of f. And this side we could rewrite as x minus p is a factor, hence the name, of f. Since the remainder is 0, xp divides evenly into f, right? So that makes it a factor of f. So let's put this into practice. If I have a function here defined in this way, I can see three points where f of something is equal to 0. So f of 1 is equal to 0. And what does this tell me? This tells me that x minus 1 is a factor. x minus 1 divides f evenly, right? Since f of 2 is also a 0, that means x minus 2 is it's a divisor of f, and since f minus uh, f of 3 is a 0, then x minus 3 is a divisor of f. So let's use the iterated Horner method here. To divide f by each of these. So first of all, we'll divide by x minus 1. So we're subtracting a 1, so we'll write a 1 here. And we carry, we multiply, we add, we multiply, we add, we m multiply, and we see that it is indeed a divisor. Let's continue with 2. So we'll just leave that here. Right? What that actually means, of course, is that we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 remainder 0. But we'll just leave those as coefficients and continue. We'll write a 2. Now we're subtracting by x minus 2. We carry, multiply, add, multiply. And again, we see that it divides evenly. And our quotient here is x minus 3. And obviously, x minus 3 divides into x minus 3. But just for completeness, we can write in our 3 here. Carry, multiply, and add. And we see that it divides evenly. So we've found the three factors of this degree 3 polynomial. So in other words, we could rewrite uh, g of x as x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. And we know that because of the 
factor theorem, which is just a special case of the polynomial remainder theorem, which is the bridge between function values and polynomial division. And we found that all out with a little help from Horner's method.